as we move on through the exhibition, and we're coming very close to the end of it now, um, one of the things that we, you know, we met at, I think it was one restaurant we went to and interviewed the, um, the owners of the restaurant, and there was just this incredible array of maniki neko, just lines and lines of them. And so they were telling the story about how they had gotten uh, the maniki neko. And, you know, we knew something of the importance of this to, um, to our culture here in Hawaii. You can also see in this view of the exhibition a nice view of the Hupmobile in the distance and the rugs hanging on the wall. So one of the things when you're putting an exhibition together, you, while I didn't want to have the Hupmobile visible from the entrance, I did kind of feel it was important to have a reference to it as you were leaving the exhibition. As we came, as we came to the end of the exhibition, the last statement on the wall was a statement made by one of the men who simply said, the ocean is the school of learning. We use that at the, as the closing uh, segment of the exhibition, this closing statement, because it again makes a reference back to the idea of water and the confluence of water and the intermingling of, and the importance of water. This also became a conceptual problem for us to try to figure out how we were going to represent the ocean. Should we take a picture of the ocean? Should we go get a, a jar of water and put it in the exhibition? And we finally decided, no, again, that this needed to simply be a statement on the wall, that the strength of this, the power of this, was in the words that the man had used to express the importance of the ocean um, uh, to him. Uh, so that, that was simply, again, screened on the wall. One of the things that I learned in working on this exhibition is different characteristics of different cultures that I feel are very important. And for me, uh, something that I felt was very, very significant was the fact that very often when I was, we were interviewing Hawaiians, the what was important to them was something that was intangible, something that was not an object, was an idea, like the ocean, the living water. It had these, I mean, the tarot. In many, in many instances, it was things that were very hard to figure out how we were going to represent them. And I began to think about this a lot because I felt there must be some significance to this. I mean, a lot of, especially Western cultures, a lot of cultures in all around the world, they put great pride in the assembling of objects, of, of gathering of things uh, around them. And yet for the Hawaiians, it's often something that is more nebulous, more intangible that's important, uh, such as the ocean, the water, the air, or whatever. Um, and I began to think that this may have a lot to do with the fact that um, it is based on an oral culture. And I think that um, in oral cultures, uh, the, this, uh, as I say, the power of conveying the message um, is very significant to them. In looking back at this exhibition and, um, and sort of summarizing, it was a, a process of sort of a bunch of people brainstorming, coming together and coming up with an idea that went beyond any one individual. But the most beautiful part of it is, is, is the way people work together and the way this exhibition at the Maui Arts and Culture Center uh, represented the people of, a, of, a, of their community. I, I would love to do this at every, you know, I would like to do it on every island. I think it's something very, very important um, because it, it gets down to who we are, you know, why we are here and what is important to us. 
you know, and what we want to convey to our children. These are important issues. It all has to do with values, human values. <laughs>